Well, can you believe it? We're six episodes in, old bull young buck. Six big ones. Here we go. My name's David Mundy, and with me, as ever, is my lovable little co-host, the young, the young bull, Griffin Logue. How Dave. are you, mate? Hi, Dave. Got that, got through it in the end, mate. <laughs> no, it's always, it's always a good, uh, good wake up call for you. Just getting that done, but uh, mate, it's good to be here. Um, yeah. Six, six through. That's. I didn't think it lasts this long, to be honest. Well, I look across the table, I just get lost in those dreamy eyes of yours. Mate. Yeah. So, uh, apologies for that. But... Six episodes in. I thought you would have retired by now, but <laughs> surprised to see how far we're going to get through. No, you haven't so... annoyed me too much just yet. That's so, uh, yeah, I'm stoked to be here with you, mate. Now, uh, you had a weekend off. You, what, a bit scared to get to, into Adelaide? Weekend maybe? off, yeah. Bought Border Patrol after uh, after paying out the great state of South Australia. They, uh, they didn't let me back in, but no, I had a bit of a calf niggle, but... Should be good to go. Um, fingers crossed. Just get through and um, yeah, excited for the weekend. Yeah, well, they actually did have the police were there. They had. Have you seen this man? And the big curly do. The big mop on the on the show. But how, how's the game, mate? Pretty uh, obviously pretty disappointing result. Yeah, very flat result. We yeah. uh, we didn't give ourselves a chance really. We blew the game in the first quarter, which is extremely disappointing. We um, felt like we were well prepared for what Port Adelaide were going to try and bring and, and do to us, but. Um, Knowing and being able to do something about it are two very different things. So. It's a hot, hot footy early, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and they're a good side. And at Adelaide Oval, they, they really um, you know, have another team almost with their, their crowd, so they really get behind them. So, yeah, hugely disappointing result, but looking forward to getting back on the horse this week. Uh, so last week on our pod, we had Caleb Seba Sarong. Yes. He's so, a great chat. Yep. He's a nice young fella. Bing Bong Sarong, good yeah. fella. What would you take out of that? Uh, two things. Loves his shoes, but I reckon it's just a cover for how much he loves feet. It could be a... Little foot fetish going on behind scenes, to be honest. He jumped on that bit, real quick. Didn't bit he? creepy, he kind of shut it down way too quick for me to kind of just dismiss it and go, hang on. I reckon I could, if I dug a bit more, I could have got a bit more out of him with uh, <laughs> this foot fetish. But um, each, each of their own, especially little Seva. So he's, he's going well. But um, I thought he was a good guest. Yeah, he was a great I enjoyed guest. Him. Yeah, yeah but I, what I took out of it was he's eating, his love of food. And yeah, um, I'm actually surprised that he spoke so much about taste because, again, we we're away on, together on the weekend and the way he attacked the buffet. Once you, I just yeah. don't think he can really taste how quickly he's eating. He inhales it, Gen genuinely inhales it. It's impressive how um, how quick he gets it down. So yeah, again, that's a, that's a cover for how much he just loves ingesting rather than the taste. But absolutely. Now while we're looking back on past weeks, we've um actually had something has been sent in for you, Grip. Ah, a, uh, you can open it if you like. But a uh, a member has sent in a little gift for you. All right. Just be careful, Dave. If this is anything bad. <laughs> Give us a look. What's it say? On the back, it's going, uh, great game, Griff. Love your show and podcast with Dave Mundy. Uh, stay injury free. Keep going. P.S. Buddy is a beast from <laughs> Ron DeLacy. Uh, <laughs> and it's a nice pick of Buddy. Great game, Griff. Yes. We Buddy lost. So Hold it up for the camera so we can all the see. Camera to so. see. Yeah, thank you, Ron. Ron's uh, also did the painting for Nat, who was well publicised, was carrying it out of the club prior to our hub this year. But um, thank you. I'm sure you'll treasure that one, mate. Six goals. So, yeah, he probably deserves it a, <laughs> more than a painting. But, uh, yeah, good on him. Thanks. Thanks for that, Ron. And another good game by Buddy on the weekend. Kick three. So, Just um, half he kicked on you. Half, half the amount he kicked on me. So, yeah, you could say they're That's half right. as good. You're just trying to help him get to 1,000 quicker. It's, mate, it's nice of you, mate. History in the making. So, I'm happy to be a part of it. And, and this is good publicity anyway, so any publicity is good. But anyway, enough of that. Um, it's a special special episode this week. Um, I thought that every time we did a podcast with Dave, it's a blast from the past. But lucky enough, we get to one of the all-time legends of the club. Um, we're in between two Sir Doug Nichols rounds. So uh, yeah, it'd be remiss of me not to bring in the uh, the great man, one of the designers of our jumper, uh, Des Hedlund. Welcome. Thanks for having me, boys. Barra, Griff. No, right, no nice see you boys. Yeah, well done. Yeah. And just uh, <clears throat> just to follow up on the buddy thing, mate. My uh, I was at a game with my son <laughs> Carson, go. and he goes, "Oh, Dad, buddy would kick ten if it wasn't for Griff." Oh, you know? so you did play there well, you go. You know, so he so, played well. Just a quietly. bit of positivity. Mate. <laughs> six no, six no, goals, but they got the win. So oh. well done, mate. Ah, that's all that matters. Four, four <laughs> points at the end of the day. Exactly right. Would have been a different story if you got the loss. I reckon. But no, thanks, thanks for that. Anyway, mate, we're going to dive a bit deeper into your playing days and stuff like that. Um, what you used to get up to, hopefully not too deep, but uh, we've got to start with this awesome jumper. Um, how did it start? So you obviously collabed with Kevin Pinder, Pinder yep. sorry, and Michaela Morrison. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did it all start? Did Frio give you a call up in that? Yeah. So Roger, Roger gave me a call and said, oh, look, we're, you know, firstly, do you want to design the jumper? And I've gone, oh, I'd love to, but I'm not really a budding artist. And <laughs> we know Roger is. He, yeah. he loves to do his artwork. And 
I said, look, I'd love to, and um, you know, I want to try and bring the family into it as well. So uh, Kevin Biner is obviously my first cousin. He's mother and my father, a brother and sister, and he, he's done a few jumpers over the years, but also he's been an artist for a long time as well. Yeah. Got his shop at Yagan Square um, in the city, and uh, that's his passion. That's his full-time employment, um, which is great. And and then to have Michaela Morris and our niece to get involved too, who's obviously playing for the AFLW team, wearing number 11, the old mighty number, yeah. me, and, me and Dale Kickett used to wear, and... Um, it was just good to have her input there as well. So, um, and plus the AFLW women will wear it next year as well, or this year when they play um, their next season. So, yeah, that's how it all started. And got my mind together. All I said was, okay, we called him KB. I said, KB, this is in my head. You to make it happen now, brother. I'll see you in a couple of, a couple <laughs> of weeks. <laughs> it was all done <laughs> virtually. So, no, nah, it was fantastic. We sort of sat down with the family and sort of spoke about our, our history and um, where the connections all come from and, we wanted to make sure we included everyone, um, you know, my, my grandfather's side and my nana's side. Um, and I hope we've done that and I hope the family's proud of the jumper and we got to see the away one on the weekend and I'm really looking forward to seeing the home one this weekend. Definitely, no doubt. So it is impressive how artists can actually do that, just yeah. be able to, you know, whatever you say, just, just get down. But I reckon you, you take most of the credit for that. You know, if you've, yeah, you said you came up, you said, mind, you said get <laughs> it done, <laughs> mate. <laughs> you've you've, you've <laughs> got it up here, that's all that matters. I've got to give him credit when credit's due. Yeah. He, uh, he's done a fantastic job and I can see it up there on the... Uh, on the stool and um, yeah, he's uh, yeah. Look, he's I've loved his artwork. Well, I have got to be biased, you know, but he's uh, he's done well over the years, and it's just great to see him. You know, keep expanding his life and his business. And yeah. you know, he's only a couple of years older than me, so we um, you know, he was a he was a um, Aboriginal liaison officer at LaSalle College for a few years, and you know, <clears throat> art was his passion. He took the big risk of going in into business on his own, and yeah. um, you know, it's paid off hopefully. So, hundred percent. Yeah, he's done a great sure. job. You mentioned you. Went to him with a few ideas. What's the biggest Des Headland imprint on the jumper? Um, I think um, I think the back. I said I said, look, I want to put that silhouette um, of you know back in 03 or 04, I think it was. Can't remember now. Um, no, no, 03 it was. Um, seven of us players, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander players, in one game was a record at the time. And I think Freo broke that a few years later, um, only a couple of years ago. So yeah, that was pretty special to have the seven boys running around. I just want to get that captured on there, but also. Do a bit of a story too about um, you know teaching the wider community what what wudge them up, which is rottenness, exactly what happened on the island um, you know, through colonisation and so forth. And you know it is a it is a massive burial site over there, and it's a lot of unmarked graves. Um, you know, a lot of our community members and strong leaders within our community across WA, from the Kimberley all the way down to Great Southern, were taken away from communities to disrupt and break those communities um, and put on that island, and never returned back. So. Um, yeah, it's definitely uh, something that I wanted to put in there, and um, yeah, I hope people can read up on it and you know, see what it is for you know. So, yep. Yeah, no, I'm definitely sure they will for sure. You said um, they did just drop it off with him, kind of with the ideas, but it is it's a long process. How long did yeah. it actually kind of take to before you got the call and you've ended up with the masterpiece we've got there? But is it did it take a long time? Over three months at yeah. least. Yeah. So we um yeah I kept going to the shop once a week and revisiting to see where he's at. He's it's a not, busy man. It's not just to walk in and say, no, right, exactly, I don't do right. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> off, right. off you go. This, this is what I want, mate. Whack there. And if you don't know that, then kin yourself. Yeah, but. just going through Macca's, mate. Get yeah. a big, big Macca to <laughs> and we'll get it back in a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, no, he, yeah, look, he, he's, like, those artists, are, they're, they're, they're different people, mate, as yeah. we all know. Mm. So um, in a good way, so I should say. And <laughs> yeah, but yeah, just going back and forth. And Michaela, add, Michaela adding her bit as well. And, and, and KB has always had it in his mind. This is how he wanted to sort of go with it and um, with the chevrons as well, which was a great idea. Instead of having just the straight lines, he just with the clapsticks, just, you know, just did the artwork instead, you know, and the number seven boomerangs he's put in there, which was a bit of a, a special gesture about the old anchor and plus it looks like number 11 up top as well. So, oh, so that doesn't say JL? I thought it, yeah, I thought it meant JL, actually, just long That's yours. the first I've heard that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? We have to go with that. So yeah. I, reckon, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had heavy. a feeling that he kind of got in someone's yeah. ear and said, you know what, I've... I reckon, I, I, reckon yeah. I've, I reckon it's on me now, boys. No, that's cool. I actually like that. So um, it is a JL symbol. Nice. Yeah. Just get the win this weekend for him, mate. Yeah, <laughs> be lovely. Yeah. How did um, coming from your thought bubble into a jumper and then seeing it in white on the weekend, clearly a poor performance by the group, but yeah. seeing it in an AFL game and then hopefully the purple this week, how does that make you feel? Oh, it's special. Absolutely. It's um, you know, to see that you were part of something um, and a, a bit of an artwork and to see it out there on, on the big stage. It was good to see. It's just a uh, yeah, pity about the result. But, you know, and it's, I'm, as you know, Barry, I'm, I'm a bit of a family man. So as long as the family get to have pride um, in the story and, and get to see, you know, all three of us that designed it, um, you know, and a lot have come to the shop and bought the maroon ones um, all last week and, and still this week and 
really looking forward to seeing it live for the first time on Sunday as well. And um, more importantly, I'm sure his boys are going to upset the Bulldogs, hopefully. So. Absolutely. Upset? Won't be yeah. upset. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> we'll, we'll be trying to get the win for you for sure. So That's thanks good. again. It's awesome. And so we'll just wind the clock back a little bit now. Does he talk about your playing career? Um, 12 years in the AFL system. Um, all started in 1998, number one draft pick. Do you want to talk us through um, years preceding that, leading up to that draft? I was born in 1998. Yeah. <laughs> on a side note, crikey. Yeah, mate. Fossils. Make us feel old, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, obviously, like like most of them, these boys as well, you know, you, you grow up, I grew up in the country town, Meriden, uh, moved to Perth when I was 11, nearly 12, and, you know, in the Karen up, and that's where the Subiaco zone sort of got into. I should have been West Perth as Kuali, um, grew up in the oh, Wheat Belt. Yeah, yeah, there was a bit of controversial there, but my old man's a massive Subiaco supporter, so as soon as he found out Subi was the zone of Karen up, well, then that Move. was all over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and look, you know, just always wanted to play footy. Um, that was, you know, that it was. And it wasn't until about 14, 15, 16 until you realise, oh, I might be not bad at this, you know, when you start mm -hmm. making the state the state teams and, um, you know, getting invited to all the Australian camps and so forth. And, yeah, look, I was lucky enough, mate, 98, or well, 97 played league footy for Subi, um, 98 as well, and then got drafted as a 17-year-old all the way to Queensland as a number one draft pick. And, um, you know, JL went number two to Frio, I mean, him born the same same year. I think we're both in the same day. Well, he's the 20th or on the 21st. We're pretty close to, yeah, right. it was pretty similarity. He grew up in a country town down not far from where I grew up as well. Yeah. So he played for West Perth. Well, I didn't, thank God. <laughs> 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 yeah, so look, um, and that, you know, that was you know, leading up, as you know, just to, to be drafted and your name caught out. And it was, I had the draft as well, the documentary um, within that for a couple of years leading up to the draft camp as well. And with Adam Ramanowskis and Brendan Favola. So that was a good insight of young kids that moving forward after that, what it looks like to, you know, with that process moving, you know, over the, over the year journey from state 18s into the draft camp and then to getting drafted to the club was, yeah, look back at it now, how young I was, but, and how naive as well and probably immature at times and a young kid and moved all the way to Queensland and, yeah, the, the rest is history, really. So. so what was your draft year like? And like we know now they've got the academies and, um, they're playing the games throughout the year now. They don't have the, the um, round robin game any or week anymore. What was your draft year like in terms of a WA rep side? No, you just played your, your state 18s carnival and then went back and played for your local clubs, so Subiaco, yeah. and mm. <clears throat> went to the draft camp at the end of the year. And then hopefully everyone tested all right. And must have impressed, yeah. You get invited to the draft day to Melbourne, and um, your name gets called out, and you have a chat on TV. And back home, you go, and two weeks later, you're back in. Queensland or wherever state you had to get to go. So you, you and Jay were born in the same year. You would have been a similar build when you in your oh, draft year. You and yeah, I was a bit, yeah, skinny. Jay, was, Jay hasn't changed, actually. No. So yeah. I think the grey hair was there too. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was, mate, he was a ripper, Jay. So um, we used to muck around. Like, you know, we both wanted to stay home. I was like, mate, you go down one to Brisbane, I'll number two to Frio. You know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it worked out. We both come, well, we both played for the club yeah. for a few years, which is great. And so um, being the first of now two Indigenous number one picks, moving up to Brisbane and leading into a fairly um, successful era for that football club. What was that move like? Yeah, it was like, it's, it's a big move for any kid to move away from home. And um, But yeah, the Queensland, which was a non-footy state, rugby league and rugby union dominated. So in terms of being a number one draft pick and having that expectation, it wasn't there, which was a good thing. Great thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then, um, as you said, got to play in a, in a great era at the Lions. And in you know, 98, I got drafted. And then pre-season, 98, Lee Matthews, pre-season was his, um, his first year pre-season as coach leading to 99 season. So me and Lee turned that club around just quietly <laughs> um, in a success from then on. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Yeah, nice work, nice work, bro. I knew you <laughs> But um, yeah, so yeah, look, Lee, Lee was, uh, he was an amazing coach and um, you know, greatest player of all time, but also one of the greatest coaches of all time. But he's a real people's person. Um, you you know what you expect with Lethal. Um, if you, you know, not just Lethal, but the, the, the you know, Michael Voss is a captain as well. Mm. Um, Simon Black is a midfielder and Nigel Lapp and Jason Ackermanis and, this you know, goes on, doesn't exactly it? Exactly, yeah. right. And then I moved up there. Um, Dead's headland. <laughs> <laughs> well, Majo and Michael McLean um, is an absolute legend. Um, yeah, took me in um, as a second father and he was assistant coach, one of only Aboriginal um, assistant coaches. Bit of a trailblazer back in those days and that was fantastic. And along with Daryl White and Chris Johnson who really um, all moved away from home to fulfil their dream. Most like most of the Queenslanders, uh, Brisbane Lions players did. There was only a handful of Queenslanders playing in the club at the time. That's what made them so successful. A lot of players that come from different areas and you had that family tight unit in a way and, um, you know, and, and the, the success showed you know, from that. So yeah, you, I think back now after we've been retired over 10 years that yeah, I do pinch myself. I was, you know, got to play with some of those great players and mm. um, yeah, it's not until you really retire and later on in life that you get a bit older, you think, oh yeah, that was a good era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And 
And you achieved the ultimate in 2002, winning the premiership with Brisbane. Yep. What are the recollections of that day? Yeah, no, that, well, look, that was uh, you know, you know, he's a childhood hero. I mean, dream really. So these guys, you know, you play every day to every weekend to get to that opportunity to play in the grand final. And you know, the previous year I played 20, 20 games in a row and got dropped for the first final and missed out on our first premiership and I won. I was the emergency. I did the whole grand final parade, parade and everything. warmed up, warmed up before the game and looking around, making sure there's no, well, I wasn't making sure there's yeah. any injuries out there. Yeah, trying to trip that <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. Sorry, so, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, virtually. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, go back in, put your suit and tie on, go back into the crowd and uh, watch the boys have a great win. And that sort of, um, I think they really, to this day, steered me into, oh, I had to work harder on my game. You know, yes, it's, as we know, it's good enough to have the talent, but you're not going to work hard behind the closed doors. Well, then you're not going to get far, you know. So that was sort of where I was lacking in a way. Yes, I was talented and um, had all the skills in the world, but I wasn't probably the best prepared or the most um, you know, dedicated footballer um, at the time. And, yeah, I had to work hard. And, you know, Acker and, and Vossi and Leper took me under their wing during the pre-season, you know, you know, at the end of 01. And O two 2 come around and, yeah, it was it was great and got, got the reward in the end, won a premiership. And um, I had two young kids at the time um, with my wife, Chantel, and um, we made the biggest move of our life, I think, which was to this day now, I still think, you know, was that the right move in terms of my football career? Maybe not. But in terms of my family and having um, my kids back home in Perth and playing footy with Freya, and looking back now, it's probably the best thing I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. And 2002 also coincided with a um, six in the Brownlow behind some of your teammates. So clearly the the penny dropped, I guess, over that preseason and had a great year. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I missed the first six rounds that year too through injury. So if I would have played the whole year, it could have been a chance, Barry. Yeah, take back his medal. Yeah, cheers. Six, and six, I had, six I, doesn't do it just as well. It's kind of equal fourth. I went. Yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, it's only just search at 25 votes, 21, yeah. 17, and you had 16. And there were a couple so. of games I was thinking, hang on a minute, I've got 22 and four goals, you need to vote. <laughs> Yeah, no, look, that was a bit surreal. I was at the, we didn't obviously go to the Brownlow because we were playing the, um, the grand final of the week. So had the, the, the function of the club at the Gabba and, and Simon Black was the, you know, the, the favourite mm. and I started to steal some votes and everyone looked at me going, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> what, what am I doing? What am I doing? What's yeah. Simon doing? <laughs> I'm like 21. I'm sitting there nice and quiet and shy. I'm just, no, nah, I don't want to go. Just give a vote to the Blackie. We're going this way. So, yeah, after that, it was all good though. So. Yeah, nice. Did notice that you said uh, Lee Matthews was a goat there. That's a, that's a big call. Absolutely. You reckon? Yeah. Mate, one of the, well, not one of the greatest players of all time. You've, yeah, you've got to call him the goat? Yeah. yeah. Mate, 300 games, 900 goals, midfield forward. It's probably, not bad. Probably does it. Probably five, gets it done. Yeah. Five, five premierships. Five premierships, I think. Yeah, so he's, as a player, and then, you know, Obviously, great Four coach. Four as a coach, yeah. yeah so it's yeah, right, not he? bad. Being lethal. It's Give me someone else effort. to break that and let me know who it is. Absolutely. <laughs> good, good luck as well. Good luck. Now, um, yeah. looking at your time at Freo, we've obviously shared a little bit of that time, but um, obviously and there's a few good characters amongst that. Who stands out in your mind as one of the uh, most memorable teammates? The most memorable teammates, bro. You, know, you, can't, you can't pick them, can I? You, know, you have your moments, but... <laughs> Oh, look, if I'm going to pick anyone, you got to go. You can't go past the whiz. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, on the field, off the field, the whiz is the whiz, as we all know. And um, yeah, great, a great bloke, and still a great mate. And you know, he's he's back in Melbourne, living um, with the family, and you know, and I think he loves it over there. Um, you know, he's a bit of a quiet guy too, you know, mm. as you know. So in terms of um, the media type and way, but he's not quite. Face to face with the boys, you know. He's, so he's, blokes, he's the main man. So you both shared six seasons together. Um, yep. Obviously, coming across, what, what did you think of Dave when you first kind of laid eyes on him? He was silky. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely, and still is silky. It's quite. Oh, you hope so. Uh, what are you, thirty six now? Oh, almost. Yeah. Almost thirty six, yeah. and still uh, leading the best in Ferris, and you know, oh, up there, mate. It's great. Easy. But like, look, I think, and look, Barrow. If any footy player would want to model themselves on not just the footy side of things, but the way Barrow goes about it. Um, you definitely have to look at what he's done. Um, you know, not just you know on the footy field, but off the park. You know, rehab, recovery. You know, not going out, having a good time with the boys, but man, being really sensible, which is great. And but it's paid off. You know, thirty six and still playing the game of footy, and hopefully, you still got a couple of years left, mate. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'll get you to talk yeah. to Belly on your way so, out. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, look, yeah. And, uh, and you can just see it from day one when he walked in the door and. Yeah, you know, he might have though. He used to have that ripped body. He's still pretty good at Barry. He's one of those blokes that sloppy rig. You feel a bit. No, no, you you heard it. You heard it. You know those oh. blokes. You feel you, you you work your your butt off, and you still can't get that body. Yeah. You can be as fit as you can be. <laughs> you go get your skin full as you're 48 or 50. <laughs> How does that work? And look yeah. at Barra. 
He's like, oh, my blushing. He's my blushing. Oh, <laughs> 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 all, all of the wrong person again. He's pumping yeah, him up. No, he, doesn't, yeah, he doesn't need it. Look at him. But I have to. Um, know, so. You blokes would have lined up on each other a little bit at training or anything like that yeah. every, every now and then. Who would have? Who won the battles then? Just maybe a little bit of one on one in the square or anything like that. Or um, I might have got him early, but yeah, I think after the one bit. year, he might have got me after that. So. Nah, it was a little bit. Yeah, we'll get onto it a little bit in a moment, but. Des was um, spent a bit of time in the rehab room as well, which yep. kind of took away That's a little bit from his yeah. training for it with yeah. us. But um, now you, you mightn't have heard, but Griff's been really raising the bar with some of the um, research and intel he's gathered on our past guests. So he's inspired me. Okay. Yeah. He's go. inspired me. So this week I've reached out to some of our past teammates and um, asked them for their recollections and, and stories of the great Des Headland. Um, and I'll kick us off with this, but um, from, from Michael Johnson, um, in his words. DJ is probably the best boxer he's ever seen come through the footy club. <laughs> there we go. You claim that? <coughs> oh, mate, it's hard to claim that. Come on. Don't mind throwing the gloves. You'd be good on the, good yeah. on the pads when you Springer said you won. I used to I'd Springer look, I'd, still talks about it. Yeah. I, I do. I grew up, I you love know, my boxing from old man, so it's definitely um, a passion of mine. But this day and age, mate, I might do one round I'm, I'm done. <laughs> that's all you need, mate. One, <laughs> one, one, one hit, that's one, all, mate, that's all mate, you need all the time. Down. Yeah, no, good mate of mine, Daniel Dawson, owns the Legends Academy in North Perth there and I try and pop in every now and, can, every now and then when I can but they, there's a lot of young kids coming through now that are, are pretty good so I just sort of <laughs> step back and just hit the, hit the pad when I have to and then yeah. go sit on a bike for the next hour. Well, from another bloke who wasn't very good at boxing, Paul Duffield, he, re he remembers um, there, was, there was a time when he punched Des in the nose while boxing and then proceeded to run around the ring for the next three minutes to try and avoid getting bashed. <laughs> no. Do you remember that? Yeah, we used to get the young boys in and um, do a bit of sparring session and um, myself and Groves, even Wiz particularly, weren't able to hit them back. So, um, yeah, we just sort of were just moving around and just get always confidence, you know, within themselves and um, in terms of just getting their foot, foot moving working and you know, just you know, throw, the, throw the jab out there when they can. It was probably me not being quick enough to move my head a bit, you know, and <laughs> Duffy being a bit of a you know, fast jab on him. So, um, yeah, I think a bit of blood came out, and I did try and get him back, but he, <laughs> he did run off, which is coward. That's all right. No, so, he's right. <laughs> so you mentioned a couple of other handy boxers in your time there. Yeah. Anthony Grover. Yeah, Groves, Groves was good. Groves, was, I don't know yeah, where Jono said I was the best, but Groves was, uh, yeah, mate, he, he could throw him, and he's, you know, six foot four. He's a big man, yeah, yeah so big he, powerful. Big unit. Yeah, he could, have, he could have been a good heavyweight boxer, absolutely. Absolutely. So and MJ's also sent um, through that you were scared of flying. Is absolutely. That, is that yeah. true? Yeah. Yeah, no, especially early days. You used to hate flying, absolutely. And um, Johnny used to always sit next to me and um, hold my hand at the time. And, <laughs> yeah, I got it. I, guess, I don't know where I got it from, but um, yeah, there's a, there was a moment there. I um, spoke to a few people about it and I'm better now right. with work and so forth. So I have to, I've got to fly quite a bit. So. I have overcome that fear just quietly, Barry, because yeah, I'm up in the front now instead of the oh, it's a bit you know, on the pointy end, yeah, 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 pointy end of the plane. <laughs> well, John, yeah, that's get a bit shaky. Yeah. Bit of turbulence, so yeah, you can't no. you can't find me one person in the world that will sit there and enjoy the turbulence. Yeah. So I, I can't stand it. No, shaking a bit. Yeah, it's more it. it's more the up and down side of things. So, but yeah, look, everyone everyone has their fears, but I've I've overcome. My wife is terrible now. So I think I've given it to her, and I'm I'm okay. So <laughs> pass it on. Yeah. yeah. So John, I said you used to sit there white knuckled on the armrest, yeah, head back, on. and everyone yeah. thought you were meditating. I was trying to sleep. It, I did that too. Yeah. So I um yeah used to see someone do some meditation at times, and when time needed it, and off I went. So and John, I was sitting next to you talking about aircraft investigation. Yeah, always. Right? Yeah. yeah. Something happens. <laughs> like, what's that red button over there for? We're <laughs> 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 sitting, sit sitting in the exit rows, and it's like oh. I was like, no, I was still in the aisle because I don't have to open the hatch. Yeah. So, little, little stupid shit. Like that. <laughs> anyway, that's the way to go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the way to do it. Um, another one from Roger Hayden I've del delved into a little bit. Um, just the one saying, you is a horse. Yeah. Is, that, is that one of your favorite sayings that yep. Roger would have known? So, yeah. I use a horse, yeah. Horse. It. Just means you're deadly. You're good. Yeah, you're deadly. Horse, yeah. Would you say it would... Would Dave be horse or not really? He's horse. Awesome. Would yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Fair enough. You've got some work you, to do there, you got a bit more to go, Griff. Are you yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, it's all right. I'm working. No, no, you didn't ask about me, mate. Don't worry, don't worry about it. You're nearly there. I'm far yeah. from it. You're nearly there. As my young boy said, you, you stopped Buddy from kicking 10 or 12 that's that right. day. So mm. that was good. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, I'm, I'm but, way. mate, you, you'll look back on that another right. 15 years and go, geez, I played one of the greatest players of all time. Yeah. Your game went to a whole other level after that. And you played well. Good work. Got a bloody poster to remind me. Should give him to sign it. Yeah. Actually, I. I asked him as well, but <laughs> yeah. has those, has those boots come happened. through yet? No, not yet. No, not yet. yet. Okay. Hasn't signed the boots for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, before you came back home, it was announced um, that you were coming home. There was a number eleven available at the club, um, and our old mate Roger Hayden he was he was eyeing it off. Yeah. He, he, want, he wanted it bad as well, but 
they reserved it for you. And poor Roger you stuck with 43. I felt bad. I felt 43, bad. 40, like 43, yeah. 11 is a great number. It's, yeah. There's a lot of good numbers out there. They're all good numbers. 43 is pretty high. Like, it's a high number. There a bit. still Rog, about it. Roger, the number one was available. Number three was available. So he had, he had some good numbers <laughs> to choose from. Yeah. But he stuck. He wanted to make it his own. I think he did. Roger, you I know certainly that? did, yeah. Yeah, the artful dodger, a dodger out of the back line. He was the sm he was a smooth. That's player. a smooth mover. He was a smooth mover. That's silky, silky. And smooth. unfortunately, injuries cut him down earlier than expected as well. And he could have been a well, he, well, he was a superstar. He could have been absolutely one of the greatest champions of the game if his body got to be, up got to be the worst part of sport injuries. <laughs> absolutely, Just, oh, yeah. shocking. But number eleven, yes, yeah, so I was like, well, Dale Kick is both our family, so I was sort of like, well. How do I get that number? Because I know I know Freo were going to retire, and I was yeah. like, "Wow, oh, if I come back, I want to get number one." Yeah, yeah. So I want to wear it. And unfortunately, I thought I was going to play a game one year with him as well, but then he retired. He, yeah. As soon as I announced I was coming home, he retired. He got scared, and, yeah, and I was like, "Oh God!" But we got to play in the game in '03, and I'm um, Indigenous All Star game against Essendon at, at, yeah. in Darwin. Dale had his sort of last hurrah, and yeah, that was special. So. Yeah, no, but no. I couldn't wear number eleven that day. I was all no, uh, I had to wear number five. God, so. no. <laughs> Is that what at uh, Brisbane number five? Number one. Number, number one. one. Yeah, so That's huge. Number one, pick one. Mm. Yeah, Back to yeah, number eleven. Dog. Crikey. Yeah. yeah. I um, thought I'd be. I thought I'd be double the player at Freo, so I went number eleven. But it didn't happen. <laughs> 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 didn't yeah, didn't quite get that far. <laughs> I like that. Um, now we've mentioned injuries, part of the game, but you worked through your, your fair share. Luke McFarlane sent through that you're a training rehab beast. You used to destroy yourself in the rehab room? Well, I had to because I couldn't get on the field. Eh? It was un mm. unfortunate that um, yeah, it happens to, to everyone. So I um, – oh, wait, I did – I didn't realise until I wait. I was – both kneecaps, I had bi bipart patellus. So I was born with two knee four kneecaps, two on each, two on each uh, knee. So I oh, wait, I cracked that one, missed about half a year. And then, you know, it's like when you miss footy, you're always you know, doing a soft tissue trying to get back in mm. on there again. So that was out and then – I know I did the right one, but that's still in there, and um, ended up being the cause of of my injuries and um, not getting back on the park. I think I played twelve games, so I played 100, my hundred and fiftieth game. I think it was around four two thousand eight, and I finished with one hundred and sixty six at the end of mm. so sixteen more games, and at the end of um, 010. So it was sort of it was tough, frustrating because you play most of your career not injured and yeah. you know, you're averaging you know, fifteen to twenty games a year, and then. Playing three or four a year, you know, and blocks like Dave Rock up. I runs up, doesn't three, get three hundred and sixty straight. What did you get to in the end? What was that? What was the road? Did you get to in the end? Oh, right. One twenty-four from debut. One twenty-four yeah. was it? Yeah. From yeah. debut was it? And then I was sick. Yeah. Never got dropped. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, there was. I almost did once, but um, didn't manage to avoid the axe. But yeah, and then I got sick against. Um, I think it was the Bulldogs that Eddie had missed on sickness at Marvel oh. Stadium. Now, yeah. yeah, which was flattening, especially looking back. You would have been in in and out a few times at Brisbane, you know, getting drops. Oh, early days. Yeah, I, th I think I remember. Debut round thirteen in ninety nine against Sydney at the SCG. Big plugger was playing, and wow. that was good fun. Yeah. And the following, I played did a right, kicked a couple of goals, and then the next game was against um, North Melbourne the MCG. Don't think I got a touch. Yeah. I played about ten minutes, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Back in those days, no rotations. You're on the bench, you're off. You're off. <laughs> Dressing gown on. Yeah, cheers. So that was. Uh, and I didn't even another. And then my next game, my last game of the year was round nineteen against Rio at the Gabba. Actually did it right the day, kicked yeah. three goals and had a few touches and then got dropped the following week. Oh. That was it. Come on, that really? was it for ninety nine. So <laughs> round I go for two thousands. Yeah, but you're right in and out for a while. I though. reckon you. I reckon no, I only said that just because Dave's yeah. never experienced it. I just thought you have got to experience it, mate. It's a good, good yeah. part of your it development. You know, yeah, he's yeah, still developing. Yeah. Just he's, he's just missed he's, it. He's but, special. This guy. That's yeah. Speak to JL about dropping me in a few weeks. Um, Fair enough. Nah, never. Lucky Mac also mentioned that you're an elite fat side kick. Do you want to? Talk us through what a fat side kick is. Yeah, so it's obviously you're running down you know, one side of the wing and you're over to the other side of the pocket or into the half forward area. So I um, used to love kicking across my body, left or right, just quietly. I learned that from <laughs> learned that from Mako. Just yeah. I remember I'll tell you a quick story on that one. So I remember it was '99 preseason, and um, a few of the boys. This is that Brisbane, and a few of the boys are trying to go on their left instead of straightening up. And Lee's like, no, in this competition, kick left and right foot over 40 metres near the target. mac has gone, yeah, I can, Lee. <laughs> Lee's like, oh, show us. And Macca went, bang, bang. Goes, Besides Acker, no one else can. So <laughs> he's all straightened up. But yeah, look, used to love watching you know, those boys play. And Simon Black used to always have that hook as well. So mm. I sort of learned how to do that. And yeah, you know, that 40, 50 fat side kick was, you know, the Lukey Mack and, and Pav and, and Weez used to love hitting up there, which is good. So, yeah. It's the money mm. kick. We could use that. We could use that these days. Typically wear a lot of spaces as well in the forward line in particular. So, yeah, yeah very valuable. Um, you also mentioned that you were captain of the brothers. Would you like to explain that? <laughs> that was a camp, eh? The brothers. Yeah. Camp. yeah, that was a good one. That was actually over at Wajimup. Um, that was the first time I ever went there. I was 
as a kid growing up, I was always told never to go to Rottnest because of the story. And um, yeah, so that was yeah that was a bit bit different in that sort of way. But it was my sort of first sort of okay, we got a group together, a bit of a team bonding session, and we were the brothers, and we dominated that camp for the whole two days. And we won everything. It was good. <laughs> so remember. best dressed. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we won all the, the running, the swimming, you name it. So it was a bit of an amazing race that it was. That's it, right. Where you moved around, around a while, different. Yep. Yeah. So that was yeah that was good, and um, that was all about you know. If I had another name now, we'd call it you know, the horses, but I yeah. changed it, changed it to the brothers. So. <laughs> had our own song. Uh, we made up, well, not our own song, but a song from, um, I've got, what's a rumpy band called Black Fella, White Fella. I remember that. It yeah. doesn't matter what your <laughs> colour, right. as long as you're a good fella. Because <laughs> 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 every time we went to an event, we would start singing that. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we so, all had to do, yeah, like yeah. a song each group. Yeah, yeah so that, that was, was good. good. Anyway, that was the brothers, mate. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. I remember our song. I had um, Lukey Mack and Robbie Hadrill as a part of my group. And so Lukey had his guitar and we did um, a Justin Timberlake song and without rehearsing it, Robbie Hadrill just jumped out in the middle of the song and started busting out some moves, some seriously good moves. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was so funny. I remember that. Oh, good those, those camps. I used to like those and get the boys just in a different side of each other, you know, yeah, and yeah. you had to pick boys that you, you know, you sort of don't know and. Would right. normally mix with. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's the best thing about it. You know? Best way to bond, I reckon. Absolutely. Break the ice. But yeah. uh, Another one from Simon Eastor at Brisbane. I used to call you the king of the goal square. Can you yeah. uh, elaborate on this? Obviously, like to get to the end of a Joey de Goose or yeah. Well, mate, when you got um, you had Simon Black and Michael Voss and Luke Aka, Power, Aka hitting it on left and right from forties. Yeah, they're, 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 they're the uh, they're the workhorses inside, you know. So it'd be like like five years at the moment, and yeah. and, and Barrett as well. But I um yeah, I could always go on the end of them, so I used to make sure I run over the top and the goal square, and off I went. It's always going to be the, it's about the king of the goal people, square. People, people say, oh, and then 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 I went one one out at times as well, which was good and. Told you know, told Vossi to head up a bit more higher and give me one out, and he's just looking and go, mate, piss off, get over there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> John O'Brien, nah, up you go, mate. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, you're right. The, mate used to love it, so you yeah. just you just know when the boys going to win the ball. You know, when you're in a good team like that, you you you're play right. your role. And if I was on the wing or half, even half back flank, I was always running Anywhere. forward. <laughs> I was always running forward. <laughs> Come for it. I was always running this forward. This gonna hit me on my Yeah, no, <laughs> that always happened. Absolutely. So. Last one from me, she was uh, called, you, called you no legs. She said you used to love the upper body, but yeah. never always miss squat day or well, chicken legs or what's the... Yeah, I've got chicken legs, but I... I I'm too be, they'd still be strong, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, look, I, I actually had the record at one stage. I'm sure 160 squat. I don't know what it's like now, but I um I did have chicken legs, but I had a strong ass. Yeah. You know, so from my hips down... Big was, glutes. Yeah, that was it. No, glutes. no glutes, no, no. no calves. Nothing. Just knobby knees and... <laughs> Just the cork and blokes. <laughs> I, used to, yeah. I used to get... Oh, there was one... Like, Woodsy was Dion Woods was worse than me in terms yeah. of our skinny ankles and, and calves. And when me and Woods were getting the massage, Woods would always come and go, Oh, stop massaging your shin bones, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the table, you got no calves. <laughs> so um yeah, no, he's he's right there, easy. That's why that's probably why I went number eleven, you know, legs eleven. Yeah. That's yeah. all right. Well, legs eleven, not yeah. mine, no. That's good. Um yeah, obviously oh, you're a good fella, so uh, I've got to hear that you you just to drive Sonny to training every day or how long did that go for and when when that begin? I started when he got drafted. Yeah. Um, I was in, I was, so I'll tell you, I was trying to get into real estate. It's coming towards the end of my career. And so I moved out to the, out to Allenbrook area because of big development, you know, so I was a bit of a strategic type move. And obviously Sonny was out of Midvale and um, gets drafted. We know the family connection. So I was driving that way. So I'd cruise over to um, the Roe Highway and off I go, duck off down Morrison Road and grab yeah. Sonny and, an hour later, we're in the car, and you know what Sonny's like. Yeah. That's every day. Would have been, would have been, <laughs> would have been, would have been, would have been and great. Like five thirty right in the right? morning, yeah. six in the morning. Oh. So you're just waking up, listening to the coffee, and he's there, like chirping the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a big training session afterwards, and you're absolutely bugging, and he's still there chirping the whole way. Home, you know? <laughs> what's it? What's a young Sonny like? Just even more chirpy than what oh, he is mate, now, or yeah. you can't even you can't put exactly. It he's just, I don't think he's changed to be honest, which yeah. is a good thing. Sonny, Sonny, Sonny. He's just uh, he loved his music, and we had a lot of you know country, western, and also you know some bit of rap and hip hop and you name it every single song was would have been, would have been a good drive yeah. he, also, good drive, so. he also good, had good a yarns. 30 centimetre plaited rat tail back then didn't he he did did he, he did and he used yeah. to and, oh, and he, there was a YouTube video of him doing some rap dancing too we used to try and get up on up on no video way. with the boys yeah, yeah. at times and he'd just yeah, get up and start doing it he didn't care you know he's got no shame does nah, he? He, he couldn't care less he's <laughs> very talented when I, when I said he was come, um, you were coming on he, he said that he actually was better on the pads than you would you? He throws it all right, Sonny. He he's, does, yeah. he's a small man syndrome. Just you know, <laughs> yeah. keep him away. You can, you can throw him well. When someone, when someone has to say they're better than someone else on the pads, you know they're trying to 
Not much, not much weight. Sure, you, know, you, know, you, know, you never say how good you are. You have to. It's up to other people that judge you, you know. So just tell Sonny you can't promote yourself. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's always good till he gets done. He's, 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 we all know, we all know Sonny can throw him. There's one man that can pump up his own tires. Though. It's probably Sonny, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could, I think, I think Sonny could be a good boxer out, out now, but not obviously a footy career. But in terms of if he wanted to be a full time boxer back in the day, I'm, he would have he would have went far. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it shows them very well. Now we'll move into a segment, Desi, we call Quick Hands. So I'll fire some questions at you. We're looking for sharp, quick answers and we'll just pump through them. Um, so your first car? Oh, a, uh, a VS station wagon. Nice. Our own. Oh, very good. I bought it to go to the Gold Coast all the time with the wife, you know, and try to surf, but I couldn't. <laughs> anyway. Your most used emoji? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to use emojis, but if I want to say one, probably a thumbs up. <laughs> Saves <laughs> right and everything back to yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to eat one thing for every meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? One thing. One meal, yep. One thing. Well, one one food, just one thing only. Like one meal. Oh, yeah, one meal. For the rest okay. of your life. Um, okay. That's a good one. I'd have to say probably spaghetti bolognese. You were destroying that toasty when you walked in. So. That was good, actually. <laughs> the last text you sent, who, who was it to? Brett. Nice. I'm at the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Which teammate used to leave the locker room in the biggest mess? Oh, which teammate? Oh, Groves was pretty dirty. Yeah. He was number 14, so just down the road. So, yeah, he was – anyway. Where did you used to sit in team meetings? I used to always try and go down the back early, but yeah, you show some leadership as you get a bit older and yeah, down the front you go. Did you have a regular sit next to partner? I didn't hang around any of the boys, any of the, any of the brother boys, because they just yeah, you stay away from them because you want to concentrate and actually get something out of the team meetings. Yeah. So I'd try and just get on my own or just – no one no, – I can't think of anyone in particular, no. Okay. This one's for Griff and he'll judge you harshly on this. Coffee of choice? Ooh. <laughs> Latte with one. <laughs> Ooh, I might come back to that. Not to put sugar in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favourite day current Freo player? Oh, that's a tough one. No, Sun, Sun. Sunny. Besides you, Barrow, but yeah, definitely, Thank definitely you. Sunny. Uh, who's your favourite current day player across the league? Shay Bolton. If you have to choose Jeff Farmer or Michael Walters to play alongside, who would you choose? Oh. Well, I played alongside the Wiz, so I've got to choose the Wiz. Uh, I think Sunny, we might have got one game together, maybe, but oh, look, I'll pick both of them, but yeah, the Wiz. And uh, did you ever done the long sleeves in your playing days? I don't think I did it in the AFL, No. I might be corrected wrong if I did it for one or two games, maybe at the Gabba, but not the Gabba, at the Brisbane, but um, definitely in the state of hands I wore it for the first time. Don't know why. The shock and carnival. Yeah, nice. <laughs> maybe that was it. <laughs> maybe that was it. Yeah, the lesson learned. So, the biggest mess Groves was. He was a bit of. Bit, yeah, bit messy. big Groves, you know. Yeah. Goes around there, come boys, get <laughs> Groves, you know, <laughs> goes, <laughs> <get it. laughs> That's how it is, mate, yeah. That's yeah. right, we'll pick up tomorrow. <laughs> 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 oh, Big the only thing that stumped me, mate, was a latte with wine. You, you mm. can't be putting sh sugar in your coffee, can you? Yeah, I, would, I do for my latte, but like I obviously in the, in the business world now, so a lot of coffee, mate. So it's sometimes a long Mac topped up is a nice one. There so, we go. Yeah. There it is. All, happy, all, 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 all it needed, depends mate. if I had too much milk earlier, I'd try not to get as much yeah, milk later. Probably know, so. fair. Yeah, yeah. Kind of too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, what do you what do you have to now after footy? So, so we've got an occupational health business. So do all the pre or oh, do pre employed medicals for the mining construction. And the civil sector and the and the government as well. So um, you know, where you return to work, injury management. Um, yeah, so that's going well. We've got soon to be six clinics. So that's uh, yeah, it's going well. Yeah. Me and uh, Big Clinton Wolf used to play at Freo back in there. He was an, origi an original docker. Yeah. So um, yeah, four years now we set that up. So. Yeah, beautiful. You're also an, an ambassador for Medala. Yeah. You can yeah. talk us about that. Yeah, so Medala is just over 350 um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander kids in the scholarships in the private schools here in Perth and all over WA, up through the Kimberley, down through the Great Southern. Um, you know, kids get opportunity to come down and board at, you know, Hale or Wesley or Guildford Grammar or St. Mary's College with the girls. So, um, yes, gives them a, an opportunity in life and um, in terms of getting good education is a key, as we know. So, um, you know, bring them down to boarding school and what they learn and what they can achieve can go back to community and, and, and you know, become really good, um, you know, whether it's business or health or government um, industries and give back. Yep. True. We, lo we love our life here after footy on the uh, Old Bull Young Buck podcast and Dave... After you sent me in a bit of uh, mail from here, we've actually got a bit of uh, Barra. We know that he finished his study as a marine biologist, etc. Is that what it was, Dave? Yep. yep. So someone sent in a... <laughs> oh, very nice. A nice uh, a a photo. <laughs> you could just 
have a look at your put show, show the camera, but yeah, there's a nice bit of uh beach in the background for you, you know, being in the pretty close. It's pretty good. It's not far off, is it? Marine scientist graduated in February 2019. Yeah, so what, very are you gonna, nice. what are you going to get? You're going to get into that industry after the footy? Or you yeah, know? possibly. Yeah. I'm at the moment trying to get something published in a journal out of my honours thesis. So oh, good. Um, just going through that process. So we'll see how we go. Yes, you go. Do you like that? Is it pretty it's going on there. It's just... That's stress we're dealing with oh, you, mate. Getting this done. <laughs> Must be a st stress. Stress would agree if it make, make yourself look that old. But anyway, nice anyway. It's good. Oh, Griff, I'm glad you brought up. Um, the off-field achievements, it seems quite topical at the moment. And in the flavour of um, people contributing to our podcast, um, I've been contacted a young fella, um, Ewan Foles. He's released a book previously, Zach's Game Plan. Uh, here's the book, obviously. Um, Ewan was uh, spent a lot of time in PCH as a, as a young child and was a part of the Starlight Foundation there. And uh, through that connection with the football club, has become an avid Docker supporter now. Um, through some of my uh, hometown connections back in Seymour, Victoria, um, I've actually found out that he's releasing a new book, uh, My Family, My Life, this Friday. So I encourage everyone to get around that, mate. And um, yeah, well done again, Ewan. We really, really love hearing from budding authors and, and people out there making a go of it. So all the best, mate. We, we hope you have a really successful book launch. Uh, so now this week, our Dogs Preview is our, the second instalment of the Sadug Nichols Round for us this week. That's a big week for WA football. Mm. We're also hosting the, the Dreamtime Clash on uh, Saturday night with the Long Walk. You'll be a part of that, Des? Yeah, so there's um, a bit of whisper around it, trying to get as many pass players as they can, um, do the Long Walk and into the ground. And yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing game on Saturday night. Yeah. And try and get the whole wider community involved and um, now share the Dreamtime at the G game. Now it's called Dreamtime at the Durbel. Double Urigan means Swan River, so yeah, no. a few yeah, emails right. have been coming up with that name, which is yeah, great. Yeah, so. well, it's great. I yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, so we encourage um, as many as they can to get there for that Saturday night game, but then follow up obviously for hours on the Sunday afternoon. Griff, you going to suit up this week, or are you going to have another rest? Um, oh, should be back. See how we go with the Carvey, but um, yeah, fingers crossed. Get, get through training, so should be good. Des, you coming? I'll be there. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. get too many games. I went to the Sydney game for the first game this year, yeah. So I try and get to about three or four a year if I can. Yeah. I'll be there this weekend. Good, you got good seats? I'm not sure where I am this week. Oh, I don't know where I am, but I don't know. I'm in the President's Lounge on Sunday. So. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Oh, hang in front of the so, game. In the President's <laughs> Lounge. Privileged so, life, isn't it? Nailed it, mate. Suit and tie. So, we'll, um, yeah, no, looking forward to it, actually. So I might just take the tie off after a little bit. Yeah, nice. Relax, relax. relax. relax the game. A few beers. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully we can have a, a better outing. Any feedback for the boys for this week in your jumper? Uh, mate, just no 0 and 7 start and kick straight. Simple as. Mm. Simple yeah. as that, really. Sounds like a good plan. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, that, that about wraps us up. Thanks, De again, Des, coming on. Was that okay? Griff was, wasn't too nasty. Hey, it was nasty. good. Yeah. yeah, not bad. Yeah, well done, mate. No, you taking over, soon. Yeah, mm. it's probably just talking you on too much, to be honest. So, I don't choose our guests. I don't tell them what to say. They just... Yeah, so you claim, mate. So you claim, but anyway. <laughs> thanks thanks again, Des, mate. It's an honour to have you on and um, privilege, actually. So thank you very much and... Uh, yeah, it's funny hearing some insights and uh, what you got up to. But again, uh, very proud to have you on, mate. So thank you. Thanks for having me, boys. Yeah, thanks, man. And tickets are on sale now for our game on the weekend. So um, as we said, we want to pack that for our second uh, Stug Nichols round game of the year and we'll get a win in Desi's purple jumper. So thanks again. Well no done, worries. mate. Good man. Cheers.